Hi everyone and welcome to today's session. Today, this session is very special. Uh, it's by a celebrity, basically. Uh, an influencer, a YouTuber. Uh, it's very light and it's very informative and uh, it's very, very important. It's about how to optimize your resume and social media presence. Uh, if you don't know that already, um, companies are moving towards recruiting from LinkedIn and from your resume. So you have to have a killer resume and a killer LinkedIn profile in order to be recruited. So for that, we have uh, an amazing person uh, with us today to talk to you about this. Uh, his name is Pietro Gali. Uh, Pietro is mechanical engineer at Baker Hughes at the day, and he make videos on business stories at night. When he first started looking for a job a few years ago, he, uh, he says it wasn't easy for him. He'd been ignored, rejected multiple times, but failure after failure, he studied the process and was able to develop method to maximize the chances of landing a job. And as a result, he got hired by companies like Ferrari and General Electric. Uh, what he'll share with you today are some tips and tricks to help you to get your, the job you want and also how to leverage your online presence uh, to push your career. As always, please keep the chat area very professional and ask, leave your questions at the Q&A part and Facebook Live um, or just the Q&A part and just keep it limited to the technical content or the content of the pre presentation so it's easier for me to filter. Um, I will be jumping also on the chat part and see um, what you guys talking about. So with that being said, I'll leave you with a great presentation. Pietro, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nihal. And thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Now, uh, I hope everything is, is working all right. I hope you can hear me, you can see me. So, and I hope everybody's doing great. And I know that many of you are based in some time zone where right now it's starting to be a little bit late. So, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m. So thank you even more for taking the time of being here today. Nihal, you've been even too, too good with me. What I'm actually trying to do with my YouTube channel is you know, to develop a little bit of the of culture on, on business, the bright side of business, and uh, help guys like you landing their, their job. My name is Pietro Galli, and with many of you, we already met uh, in, the, in, the in the past weeks. So what are we actually going to do today? We are going to see how can we create and improve our resume and our LinkedIn presence? In the past weeks, I connected with many of you. I received th uh, you know, hundreds of CVs. I tried to improve as many as possible of them. Tonight, uh, I would like to give you as many tips as possible so that you can actually walk with your own legs and improve uh, resumes and LinkedIn. Now, one very important question that we all have is, why are we here? And I mean, it's, you know, it's good, it's great to have a good resume, it's good to have a, a very nice online presence, but we are not doing that just for the sake of, of having a nice resume, uh, you know, attractive, aesthetically beautiful LinkedIn and so on. All of these things that we're going to talk about a little bit today, it's part of a bigger process and a bigger goal, our big why, which is, finding a great job. Now, what is a great job for me might not be a great job for you and vice versa. It depends on many, many things, multiple factors. But what I would like to stress a little bit more here in this introduction is that this is just a part of the process. In my videos, in my channel, I divided all of the process into three steps. So we have a study phase. I'm going to go into that a little, in a little bit. And then we have what we're talking about today. So the marketing phase. And finally, we have the storytelling part. These are the three steps that we need to master to get a very good job, the best job for us. Now, what I mean by that with study, I mean, we need to understand the market. We need to understand which are the best companies for us and 
we also need to understand a little bit more about ourselves. What do and what does motivate us as workers? And uh, how can we prepare ourselves in the best ways for the best companies that are more right, you know, the best fit for us? This is the study phase. Identify the best companies for us. And then we're going to jump into step number two. This is the part that we're going to analyze today. So marketing. I call this marketing because we need to let the companies know that we are out there, that we are for sale, that we are available to get a job. How can we get into these companies' radars? And the, the, the main purpose of this step is to actually land the interview. Third and final step, let's see how to get hired. And I call this part storytelling because the storytelling part is the hearth of this last phase, which is actually how can we tell a better story about ourselves? How can we turn interviews questions into nice and effective stories in order to present ourselves and to market ourselves and to persuade in the best possible ways. And this is a very interesting part, as well as, you know, individual interview, groups interviews. So the process, it's big. What we're going to do today, it's step number two, super important, the marketing phase. If we're going to have time, if we're going to have the chance in other webinars, maybe, I would love to talk to you a little bit more about one of the two other steps. Otherwise, on my YouTube channel, I did this course, which is in Italian, and I'm about to translate all of the videos for all of the steps of the process in the next weeks. And I'm going to publish that in English so that everyone can actually understand that and go through there. So I'm super excited today. Let's see how to market ourselves in the best way as possible. And let me start with some annoying truth something that nobody would like to hear, but unfortunately it's like this. So our university degree, it's not enough anymore. And, and this was super annoying for me. When I, when I started, I graduated from one of the best university in Italy and I got a double degree with an American university. So like to me, you know, spending time in making resumes, in improving my LinkedIn profile, actually in opening a LinkedIn profile because I didn't even have one. It was such a waste of time. I was super annoyed by that. Why do I need to invest all of this effort, all of this time to market myself while I already have some backup hard numbers like most of you already have, all of you already have. And, and the most important part, it's your university, all of the technical skills, your internship, all the things that you already have but unfortunately, it's not enough anymore. And we know, even right now, for, for the market condition, we see that, especially in the oil and gas world, we are witnessing one of the worst downturn in the oil price together with the most furious, I would say, global pandemic. As a result, the demand for, for, for skilled people, it's going lower, but at the same time, the number of people graduating from university, it's going up. So in, under an economical point of view, we have a demand that is going down and an offer that is going up. So competition is much more furious and the way that we market ourselves, it's very important. Once, of course, we have the backup numbers and we have the hard skills to back up our marketing. Just to give you an example, the difference on myself between marketing myself properly and not doing that was the difference between landing no interviews and landing interviews with uh, Lamborghini, Maserati, Ferrari. I ended up uh, getting a job for Ferrari because, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer, so cars were my world, especially right after uh, college. So this is the, the difference. Myself, my studies, what I did was the same, just the marketing was different. So let's see today how you can improve your marketing and hopefully maximizing the chance of getting a new job. Let me start with some before and after um, examples. Now, as I mentioned, I already met uh, a lot of you, at least you know, hundreds of you who send me uh, their CVs and Nazrin, uh, which I thanks very much, she was the, the winner of this challenge. So actually what you can see is the before on your left, 
the Nesrin CV, the one that she sent me. And on the right, you can see the result, what I created for her. And, and then she will modify this. She will even customize it even more uh, for her. But in a nutshell, just by taking a look at that, you can clearly see the result, which one is more catchy, which one catches the attention in the best way. And let me tell you something, going through the hundreds of CV that you sent me, I can clearly tell that the CV on the left, the standard uh, uh, CV that Nesrin sent me, it is actually very much similar to the vast majority of CVs that I received. So imagine this, imagine that you are a recruiter and you have a pile of hundreds, hundreds of CVs that almost, they look almost all the same, like the one on the left, and then bam, immediately you find a CV that stands out, something like the one on the right. Now, of course, your attention will be grabbed much sooner. And, and to say the least, to say the least, you will go through that and see, okay, this is different. Let me, let me understand a little bit better what is that she has done. And this is the most important thing because the purpose of our CV, and this is very important, the purpose of our CV is to grab the recruiter's attention and trigger his or her curiosity enough so that he or she will be motivated to pick up the phone and contact us. That's it because this is a marketing document. This is not a repository of all of our achievements. This is not a summary of our life. This is a marketing document with the only aim of taking us from our houses to the job interviews. And how can we actually craft a CV? What are the principles besides the aesthetic beside the being visual or not being visual, that we can go through that in a minute, what are the principles that can allow you to turn your CV in a more effective ones? Um, let me go through these four points, analyzing my CVs, but in the same time, I would like to ask you something. I know that you will have a lot of questions, a lot of personal questions on your specific case, please feel free, even right now when I'm saying something and you have a doubt, you don't understand something, you would like to go more into some of the uh, things that I'm talking about, feel free to uh, send your questions because I would like to leave as much time as possible to address each and every question of yours. If we won't have enough time, I have my LinkedIn profile, reach me out there. I'm gonna have a lot of lives on my YouTube channel and I have a lot of lives each week trying to uh, answer your, your question. So please feel free to ask as many things as possible. Now, one thing that I would like to uh, ask you right now, can you see my CV? Can you more or less read it or do I need to go out of the presentation and open the, the file? Um, let, me, let me know that. If you can, if you can follow just with this would be, would be better. And I don't know, Nihal, Professor Ahmed, if you uh, can send me some, some feedback, can you actually see? And um, so let's go a little bit into this CV. Let's analyze it more in depth. What can we see right now? First thing that we can see, it's one page. And this is the- Yes, yeah, sure. Everyone can see um, the, the slide and it's visible. Just letting you know. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So as you can see, this is one page. Oh, and let me, sorry, let me go back a little bit um to Nesrin CV. The one that you can see on the left, it's just the first of two or three pages uh, of CVs. So I just put one just for the sake of the of the presentation. So most of CVs that I received, they are on average two pages long. We need to be within one page. And trust me, it's going to be super, super difficult to be short, which is our first principle, but it's super important. Then after this webinar, if you want to go and Google for fun, uh, Elon Musk visual CV, you will see that it is actually possible to sum up, to squeeze 
all the experience of Elon Musk, you know, the founder of PayPal, SpaceX, Tesla, one of the most interesting entrepreneurs out there, it's possible to squeeze all of his experiences in one page. We should be able to do the same. All right, so short, one page. Let's see how to cut things and what to include in this one page, because this is very important. The second thing that you, and we're gonna go through that in a minute. The second thing, extremely, extremely important that you need to have on your CV, it's to be clear. And by clarity, by being clear, I don't just mean the fact that, you know, you don't have to squeeze too many things together just because you have one page. I don't just mean that you need to have a CV that it's clearly readable. You, you see, you can clearly read through my CV. By clear, and please guys, take note of this. By clear, I mean that anyone who looks at your CV must be able to understand in one second what is your job qualification. So one second, clear. Right below my name, you see Operation Management Engineer. And this is so important to be clear. For many of you, probably it will be field engineer, petroleum engineer, uh, geophysicist engineer, and so on. But please take the time, clearly state what is your job qualification right below your name. We're gonna go through that. We're gonna see what is the path, the journey that our CV does, and we're gonna see why it is so important to be clear. We're gonna get through that in a minute. Now for the third point, this is something that, how many people are we here right now? We are 300 people, a little bit more. Okay, out of these 300 plus people that we are right now, all of you will see this third point, but I, I'm sure that 95% of you will not actually modify your CV to implement this third principle, which is add numerical results. And many of you, we already met in my lives on my YouTube channel, you know how annoying and repetitive I am on this part, but it's so important because 95% of people don't do that. So if you do that, it's gonna automatically makes you stand out. Now, what I mean by numerical results, let me go through my CV real quick. Numerical results, I mean hard numbers that will prove that you can actually deliver a value for the company. Because let's be clear, at the end of the day, our companies will hire us because they produce value for them and ultimately because we let them make money. So if you did any projects, anything, and you saved money, you uh, produced money for the company, use numerical results. Now, I know what most of you will, will say now, we are fresh graduates. We really have very few experience. How can I find some numerical results? You can take your time. And we did this exercise with Nesrin as well. Take your time, go through all of the internships that you have done, the group projects, some practical projects that you have done for your, for your university or during your internship and try to find out some numerical results, numerical achievement, for example, uh, analyzed X different type of welds, okay? Uh, being on field on three, four, five, six, seven different sites, okay? These are not, not I mean, these are not uh, money that you're saving for the company, but these are numbers. So at least anyone who looks at your CV, maybe you're a field engineer, it will, he will clearly see in one second, okay, he has field experience, he has been in 15 different uh, sites, eight different sites, experience in internship with X different companies. These are very important because they are tangible and they are clearly understandable by a non-technical person. And this is our fourth pillar. Our CV has to be understandable by a non-technical person, a person who knows a little bit about our industry, but who's not an expert. In a minute, I'll show you the path of the CV. We're gonna see why short, clear numerical results and non-technical are so important. Some other things. Oh, okay, what, what non-technical, what I mean by non-technical, anyone who reads through my CV can see that, for example, here on Ferrari, improved assembly line efficiency, saving 250K. It's understandable, even 
if you are not a technical, even if you don't know anything about process improvement, you see that I improved something and that I saved money for the company. Let me go on a halfway here. Uh, line number one, searching commodity manager, managed global raw material RFQ, saving 250K. Now, acronyms. We can use some acronyms like I did here, but please don't do that too much. So for example, a non-technical person will not understand what an RFQ is, which by the way, it's when you ask multiple suppliers for price and you choose the best one and you negotiate with suppliers. Besides that, a non-technical person will not understand what an RFQ is, but he or she will for sure understand saving $250,000 for the company. So that's why it's important not to be too technical and to have numerical results and to put on hard numbers whatever it is that you have done. Again, short, clear, and by short, one page, clear your job um, specification, okay? So your, your job qualification, numerical results, non-technical, other things. If you have, and most of you guys do have it, work experience or practical experience, please put that on the top of your CV because um, our, our bachelor degree, our degree, our university is the minimal requirement, is the reason why we can sit at the table and we all have it. Otherwise we wouldn't be in the conversation for that particular job. But then when you sit at the table, your practical experience is what will make the difference. So please, your practical experience, put that on the top, your internship. And even if you have some uh, practical technical projects that you have done for the university. So it was everything in theory, but it was practical. So please put that. Show companies that you actually know as much as possible about the work world. All right. Now, very quickly, because I don't want to be too long, I want to leave uh, as much time as possible for your question. Let's see which is the path of our CV. So, and why it's important to be simple and non-technical. This is us. We are sending our CV to the company, and in the company, the first person who will put his hands on our CV, I called him Mario. Mario is an HR intern. He is absolutely a non-technical person, and what Mario has to do, he will receive thousands of CVs, a huge pile of CVs. He will skim through all of that CVs and according to very simple parameters, he will sort the CVs. So he will decide which one will go on and which one will be rejected. Mario will use, as again, non-technical person with a very, very, very little experience. So he was told by his boss, and we're gonna see who, who is his boss in a minute, was told by his boss, go through this CV and select by the job qualification, by uh, the fact if they have or they don't have the bachelor degree and very few other parameters. That's why it's so important to state our job description, our job qualification, right clear. So Mario was told, take me all the field engineers, bam. Mario will see that in one second and our CV will be passed to Mario's boss. That's why it's so important and clearly understandable what is your job description, your job qualification. Let me introduce you our second, the second person that we will meet. His name, in my, in my fantasy, his name is Karen. Now I'll tell you why I, I gave him this name. He is the HR manager. I don't know if many of you uh, is into Greek mythology. So Karen in Greek mythology is the person who has the power to take people from earth to heaven. He is the one who takes people from one place to another one. That's why I called the HR manager Karen, because he is the one who is who is in charge and who has the power to take us from our house to the job interview. Karen is a non-technical person. The HR manager, it's a non-technical person, but he has a lot of experience in the industry. So he will not know all the specification about the jobs, all the daily routine that we will have to do in the job, 
but he for sure will understand some technical jargon. So for example, on my CV, uh, you remember the part about the RFQ. So Mario will not know anything about the RFQ, but will know the dollar sign. He will recognize that. Karen will know what an RFQ is and he will actually uh, evaluate that. All right, so second uh, scheme with, with him, if we do have other technical qualif qualification and Karen likes us, he will pick up the phone, he will contact us and we will land the interview. Right now, once we already have the interview set, now and just now comes into play the most important character who I call the Morpheus, like in the Matrix. He's the one who has the power of make us or break us. He is the hiring manager, our future, our prospective boss. And let me stress this thing. He will get our CV just right now, once we have already been contacted and once we already been landed the interview. That's why it's so important for our CV to be not super technical. Put some jargon, yes, not too much. Numerical results are very good for bypassing the, the first two steps. So we will go to the interview. At the interview, we will have blue pill to be hired, but we're gonna answer technical question by Morpheus. And usually the hiring manager will be together with the HR manager, with Karen. He will ask personal questions. You hopefully will have been studying with me, so you will be prepared for everything. And uh, Mario, Mario, one day, one day we'll grow up. <laughs> All right, let me, let me close this thing with uh, another scenario. So we know these three people, two of them are non-technical. The technical one will receive our CV once we have already landed the interview. There could be another character into our game. And I called him Mr. Smith from The Matrix. Mr. Smith is in the metrics and in the reality, a computer. This is, this is a computer. It's called ATS, Applicant Tracking System. This is an artificial intelligence. This is a software that go through the CVs of thousands of people. And according to some keywords, it decided whether you pass the minimum qualification or you don't pass it. So, what are the, the particular things about the ATS? It's a computer, works on keyword. It likes very much more Word documents. So CVs in the Word format with a simple and standard layout. That's why my big recommendation to all of you is to have at least two types of resumes. So you wanna have your visual resume that you're gonna be using 90% of the times, but then we also want to be prepared for the ATS, for Agent Smith, for the computer. So we wanna have another CV that abides to all of the four principles that we said before. So it's short, it's clear, it has numerical results, it's understandable by a non-technical person, but it is in a clear, simple word format. Very important, in case, that we know that the company has an ATS system, we will submit this resume right here, which is perfect for the ATS, but at the same time, since it applies to all of the principle, it's good also for people. Now, one question that you for sure might have is, how can we know if the company has an ATS system or if it doesn't? And the question is, there are a couple of things that we can take into place and into consideration to understand that. The first thing is, if in the job description, if in the job description, there is mentioned something like, please submit your resume in a word format, that is a big bell that has to ring. In that case, man, probably they have an ATS because they want the CV in word format. Nobody would otherwise want the CV in a word format. Another thing that we can do, which is super good that we can do, it's actually Google it. Does the company, you know, does the company XYZ has an ATS? And uh, yeah, multiple times they will even tell you, you know, we have an ATS system, so please make sure to submit your resume in this format. 
If you apply for very small companies, nobody will have uh, ATS. So uh, word format, if they ask for that, that's a ringing bell. Otherwise, Google and we can go like on Reddit and stuff and we can actually understand that. Between the two, if you need to choose, I would of, you know, of course go for the visual one. But again, this word format, it's very, um, it's very practical as well. Now, how can we actually make, now we know the principles, okay? The four principles plus experience before education, be short, be clear, all of these things. How can we actually, are out there any tools that we can actually use to leverage our, um, to improve, let's say, our, our resume? Yes, there are. So these are some uh, websites that I would recommend. So we have Canva. I don't know if you heard about Canva.com, one of the most famous um, designing uh, companies. And um, then another thing that we, that, we, that we can do, so sorry, about Canva, important. It's, it's for free, it's for free. You have to subscribe, but it's free. They have a lot of templates, but it's not 100% customizable. Uh, but they offer a very good variety of things. Second, myperfectresume.com. This website or any other website that uh, offers simple system to have a visual resume. It is super fast. It has hundreds of templates. On the downside, they are even less customizable than Canva, even less customizable, and you need to pay. Uh, but if you want something good, good enough, quick, uh, of course, I would suggest this. Third and final option, you have myself. So you have my templates. Uh, they are for free, of course. Uh, they are 100% customizable because they are either on the Word document or on PowerPoint templates. So you can play with it as much as you want, change things, add um, add pictures. I like to add logos of all the companies I work for. For example, this is something you cannot do in the other, um, in the other websites. So my name is Pietro Galli. You can add me on LinkedIn. Tales of Startup is my uh, YouTube channel. Go there and, and ask me for, the, for this. Then I would even ask uh, Professor Ahmed if it's possible uh, for me you know, to give him all of this material and he will share with, with, with you. But you know, don't be shy, don't, you know, just reach out to me on, on, on LinkedIn or YouTube and um, I will pass everything to you. Let me show you real quick. So now you should be able to see my presentation. Let me show you what I mean, what are these models. So the models look like, look like this, you, you see. There are different models that I prepared for various people. I can pass these templates over to you and you can play with it, you know, you can modify everything. And this is gonna be, I think, pretty uh, useful to uh, many of you. And, and again, it's, it's, it's for free. So let me go back to the presentation and, and we gonna go to another very important point uh, that we're gonna touch today. So let me, uh, let, let me drink one second, sorry. If you have any other questions, please uh, ask and reach out to me. <clears throat> We, do, we will do our best to address every question. Now, LinkedIn, the resume, it's super important, but more and more people are switching their attention and recruiting through LinkedIn. So let's see three very important things, very basic, but extremely important that will step up your game in LinkedIn. Which are these three principles to master LinkedIn? You wanna have a good header, you wanna have great skills and most, most important guys, you want to have a great network. Let me stress a little bit just the importance of network. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for LinkedIn. If it wasn't for me sharing the content on LinkedIn and, and, and Professor Ahmed saw my, my videos and we organized these and we managed to prepare all of this. Network, it is so much important. Let's see how to take the best out of our network. But first, header and skills. On our CVs and on LinkedIn, words are super important. And as you know, on Google, on LinkedIn, everything works on keywords. So is that a way 
to understand which are the best keywords that we can use to improve our header, our skills, our description on LinkedIn, and also our resume. How can we find the right skills? So let me share with you right now a quick tip that I would love all of you to, to do and to, and to have to find the best skills to show on your LinkedIn and also on your resume and how to improve your header and your now, okay, I see, I see many of you are adding me. That's, that's fantastic. Now, what I would like you to do, I would like you to go on some website like monster.com, indeed.com, Glassdoors, on LinkedIn as well, and find five, six, seven, eight different job descriptions that actually fits you. So, you know, you can go here, Petroleum Engineer 1, for example, and let's see what we, what we have, you know, and, and I would like you to find some job descriptions that you think that you could be a good fit for. Then what I would like you to do, copy everything here. So you, you select everything, you copy, and the more uh, job description you find, the better it is. You go on a Word document, okay, you paste all of the description here I took I think five or six different job descriptions. Once we have a good amount, we copy all of them. You can go to WordCloud, wordclouds.com, paste. All right, so here I paste like four or five different job descriptions, apply. And this is gonna help us incredibly to see which are the most required keywords. Now, this is not an automatic tool. I mean, this is gonna be super important and you can see, bam. And we see how many times a single word is repeated. So for example, engineer, look at that. We have so many things. So let me see, for example, then experience that we have, for example, we have filled so many times, 10 times. You know, it's a lot in five different job description. This word is repeated even, I think, even more. You see, even more than 10 times. Then, for example, let me see. Uh, management, look at that. Management, manufacturing, management, nine plus four, etc. So based, for example, on these keywords, a good description that you could put of yourself to be a good fit and having overlap of keywords with this job description could be, for example, petroleum engineer with multiple field experience and able to effectively management crisis. And for example, let me see equipment. Do we have anything with equipment? Equip. Let me see. So yeah, you see equipment seven, seven times. So, you know, if you have knowledge on field equipments, now, use your critical thinking as well. This is a super powerful tool to tell you how many times a word is repeated. But once you, for example, see a good word that could be good for skills or good for qualification, then please go on your job description, Control F, and let's see, for example, uh, we can, you know, let's see, what and in which context they have used that word. And so that we can actually see product management. This is, that could be a super cool um, skill to highlight in our LinkedIn profile. So please guys, <clears throat> job descriptions, uh, let me go back, job descriptions, then you take all of the job description for which you think you're a good fit, you analyzed all of that, you use word cloud plus your critical thinking, and you come out with three skills, key skills that you wanna have, even more, but three, it's important, we're gonna see in a minute why, and um, a, a, a very optimized uh, a very optimized header for LinkedIn, and at the same time, and at the same time, a pretty good, uh, you know, optimize header and optimize the description. Now, I'm gonna show you my profile as an example, but please, this is not 
a perfect example, okay? Because I'm not looking for a job. So if I, were, if I was looking for a job, for example, instead of writing Baker Hughes Aspire Supply Chain, Aspire, nobody knows what, it, what Aspire is. The Aspire is the leadership program of Baker Hughes. So I would, if I was looking for a job, I would, I would said probably leadership program in supply chain experience with multiple, um, for example, for uh, production management and so on. Here, I just have a description of myself, you know, instructional designer, passion for that YouTube content, but you, I would like you to find as many keywords as possible and modify your header accordingly to that. Now, one, uh, one tip, if you download the LinkedIn app, the number of character that you will be able to use are higher than the number of characters that you are able to put if you modify your header from your computer. So this is a, this is a tip. Try at least until the, the next update. It was so, so, uh, and you know, of course, the more keywords you can put here, the better it is. You want to be clear on what you do, but please try to use as many keywords as possible. Same thing for the about section. Third and final point about the skills, why skills are so important. Let's, let's see the process. When a recruiter is looking for a candidate, what does he do? The recruiter has the job description. He will take some keywords from the job description. He or she will put those keywords into LinkedIn and LinkedIn will find a match according, you know, find many matches according to those keywords. So where is LinkedIn looking for those keywords? LinkedIn is looking for those keywords in your header, your description, and your skills. These are the, para the parameters where if LinkedIn find a match, you will probably be up in the results shown to the recruiter. That's why it's important also to add skills and to have uh, the, the right skills. And guess what? People can endorse the skills and the more your skill is endorsed, the higher you will be on the search. That's why I prepared something for you. Please, if you want to, I, I, I am already connected with many of you on, on LinkedIn and probably I will be with even more after this webinar. What I prepared for you is this thing. I would like you to help each other a lot. So if you go on my profile, if you want to add me, add me. If you don't want to add me, it's not, it's not probably you, you will see, you know, you will be able to see that anyways. You go on activities and you see this network exercise. Click on this. This is my post. This is the last post. I just uh, made it before this uh, webinar for you. I would like to comment on this, the three skills that you would like for people to endorse. To, you know, to endorse for you. And we can, so you guys can connect with each other. I would like you guys to add each other on LinkedIn. This will help all of you and to endorse each other's skills. Um, because the more, uh, you know, the more you'll be endorsed, the better it is for the search. And then for example, let me, let me show you another thing. If you endorse someone else's skill, here I endorse the, I, I work with this, with this guy. So I endorsed his skills and guess what? If I'm a recruiter, I see the endorsement. I can click on the endorsement and see all of the other guys that has endorsed those skills. So not, not just you will receive some endorsement back, but also recruiter could accidentally and, and you know, can see your profile from someone else's profile. And this is, guys, this is a network game. This is a game in which we win together. So please take advantage of this post that I, that I, that I made, comment with your, with your skills and please add each other and grow your network and endorse each other and help each other because you all will benefit from this a lot. Let me go back to the uh, presentation. We, we've seen, how to find the right, the right keywords and how to use those keywords. So the importance of endorsing the skills. Another thing that you can do on LinkedIn 
it's to share content and share videos. You can create your own, which is perfect, but you can also go and look for some, uh, you know, content for someone else and share those, engage with other posts, being active on LinkedIn, because guess what? LinkedIn, as Facebook, as Instagram, as all the other social networks, it is actually a social network and will evaluate and will, of course, take more care of you if you are an active user. So with the, the same person, with the same skills, with the same experience, with the same keywords, if num person number A, if, you know, if person number one is more active, will probably show, uh, you know, it, it will probably appear in many more job search. So being active and please, once you will find your job, don't forget about LinkedIn because it will be so useful for you afterwards. And again, still from my experience, I have a job. I'm not considering right now to change my job, but using LinkedIn, sharing content, creating content has helped me so much in my career within my organization. So use this uh, platform. Third and final uh, point, use uh, LinkedIn groups. There are many, many interesting groups. One thing that I would like to do, and let's see, I think would be pretty interesting. I would like to create a group for us and that I will expand to other people, a group where after any job interviews, anyone can go there, put and post the questions that he or she was asked so that we can all answer those questions and see how to actually craft better answers for the most common questions. This I think could be a pretty good. Let me know if you would like something, something like that. I can easily create one group for us. At the same time, job hunting groups, there are many of those, just Google that, super easy. And in some specific groups, you can find very good content to share and, and being active. Now, I hope I, I didn't run too long. I really hope we, we do have a lot of time for, for your questions, because I see we have many. Real super quick recap for everyone, resume and LinkedIn. Principle for your resume, it gotta be short, it gotta be clear, it gotta have numerical results. You wanna be on the top 5%, not the 95% who will not put numerical results. Gotta be understandable by a non-technical. Short, one page, clear, your job title, super clear, numerical results, not use too much jargon. On LinkedIn, we have seen how to find the best keywords. We have seen where to use those best keywords in our header, in our descriptions, in our skills. Use the, uh, the posts that I've done to connect with each other, endorse each other's skills and grow together your network. Now I want to get your, your question. This is not the end. If, we cannot, if I will not be able to get your questions, we have LinkedIn for any other things. I'm going to keep on doing many lives. I know that some of you guys already took part on that, where I will be sitting here taking all of your questions, one hour, two hour, all of the time of the word, I want to go through everything that you uh, need. And then you're, of Thank course, you know, you're gonna have a lot of videos. Yes, please, Nihal, if you have any questions. Yes. We have a lot of questions. Uh, thank you so much, Pietro, for the very informative presentations. Um, so I have a question. Can we send our resume or CV on PDF form? On PDF, oh yeah, yeah, sure, yes. Uh, very, very interesting question, very important. Yes, I mentioned uh, the, the Word format just for the ATS. For all of the other reasons, you know, for all of the other cases, yes, please do send your resume in, in the Word format. So for example, you will use PowerPoint. If you're gonna take my, tem my templates, you're gonna use PowerPoint to prepare your your resume, but then you're going to export the resume in PDF. Yes, that's a very important question, very important to point that out. Yes. Okay, someone is asking what is the ATS uh, compatibility and how we ensure it? Okay, yeah. So uh, most, most of ATS are able to uh, go through PDF file, like especially right now, most of them are. But to be 100% sure, let me, let me share my ATS proof template. Uh, to be 100% sure, I would send the word 
document. Let me let me show you mine. Okay, I would send the uh, the this template in Word. So ATS comp uh, compatibility, you want to have standard name. So for example, work experience, you want to call it work experience or career, not call it you know what I've done, something more about me because the ATS it's a computer, it is stupid, it will not understand. The standard you can be, the better it is. Bullet points, word format, and this is a very nice trick for the ATS. Having a set of keywords that you put at the beginning of your resume that will, you know, that will guide uh, people on what is your uh, qualification, what is that you've done, what are the, uh, the yeah, the the keywords related to you. One thing, let me just uh, be clear on this. I can share with you this template, no, no problem. If you want, instead of a set of, uh, of keywords, another very, very super interesting thing that you can do is to create a description of yourself like we did for Nestrin, for example. Let me show you here. Instead of a lot of uh, keywords, what you can do having a description of yourself in which you make sure to include the keywords and even to highlight them, okay? So either one of the two will work. And, you know, honestly, going up, I would even prefer the description where the keywords are embedded. These will guarantee the, um, the compatibility with the ATS. You know, you have your, your contacts, it's clear, it's standard, work experience, education, and it's in Word format. I hope this was, uh, this answered your, your question. So another question would be, um, what is me meant by visual form? Is it on picture or on PowerPoint? Oh yeah, uh, yes. Uh, by visual, I just, let's say visual, it's just a word that we use to over stress and emphasize the difference between the one here on the right and the one here on the left. So visual, it's just you know, a design uh, word. So for the visual, again, trying to export those resumes in uh, a PDF format, okay? Don't send, uh, don't send your visual in a JPG, in a JPEG format. Try always to use um, PDF, unless we're talking about ATS, the, the, the computer, in that case, the Word document, it's better. So as a general rule, always try to have your PDF in case you know that you're going through an ATS or in case it's like clearly stated in the job description, use a Word format. Okay, so another question. Someone is asking, are you saying that oil and gas industry is not viable anymore and it won't be a good scoop in the upcoming years? No, 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 no. I, I'm not. I, I'm working in this. I'm working in this, uh, in this uh, industry. So, um, no, no, absolutely. What I'm, what I'm saying is that competition is way furious right now in this very moment because we have this downturn and, but at the same time, the fact that there is less jobs. It doesn't mean that less people will, will graduate. So in this very moment, we are experiencing this, this thing. So that's why it's so important to leverage at the best your resume and your online presence, your LinkedIn presence, because you have a lot of competitions. And, uh, but no, 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 I mean, uh, the oil and gas is not dead. So absolutely, you know, and best, best times will come actually, and, and they will come pretty soon because it can go any worse than this. So be, uh, be patient because maybe it could take you some time. Maybe you will not see the result immediately in the first month or two months because of the global situation, but keep on trying, keep on improving uh, your, your CV and your online presence. Definitely. Okay, we have an interesting question. Someone is asking, uh, the pandemic has caused a gap here between the studies and employment. Well, for most graduates, yeah. how can this gap be justified on the resume? Hmm. Very, very interesting. So if you're sending your resume 
to uh, anyone who's in the industry, we know the downturn. And uh, unfortunately, we had even to lay off uh, many people. So it's especially in the industry that goes in cycles, like the, the oil and gas industry ones, we are used to, to see these gaps. But one thing that I would so strongly, so strongly uh, recommend you is while you're not finding a job, don't hesitate to maybe look for another job, but you know, you, you maybe have a, a, a technical, still a technical degree. So maybe there are some mechanical uh, engineer job that you can do with your petroleum engineer with no problems. And at the same time, there are many courses, many certifications that, that you can take. So while you are unemployed, while you are looking for a job, try to do whatever it takes to improve your tool set, improving your skills, finding another job. So to show them that, you know, I didn't have a job because of, you know, because of the downturn, something that you probably know even better than me. But in the meantime, I didn't lose my time. I worked on these courses. I improved my skills. I have this certification and I did work doing something else. Um, I, I had, uh, for example, I had a couple of uh, people who worked uh, at the daily job as a waiters while, you know, with a mechanical engineer, they worked as a waiters because it was the downturn. And I told them, you know, specify this, either in your CV or in your cover letter, you know, I am doing currently this because of the downturn, but I am someone who's not afraid, you know, to get his hands dirty, to work, blah, blah, blah. And so this is very important. It shows you. So don't be afraid of gaps. Try to have anything uh, possible to fill those gaps, especially, and they will probably ask you something about this on the interview as well. Good answer. Uh, so I have another question, which I think is important as well. Uh, someone is asking how to modify the, the resume or the CV according to the job demand or the job slot or the job vacancy. So would you like elaborate more on writing for example, um, I don't know, the introduction or the objective or the um, cover letter and how to like tailor that on the job description. Extremely nice. Let me, let me go to, let me share with you my resume a little bit bigger. Okay. So, no, let's go with Nestling one actually. So it's maybe it's even, it's even more. Okay. So for example, one thing, uh, all right, as I told you, I would like you to have two types of resumes uh, according you know, to the ATS and, and visual one. Then, of course, this is super important. Your, let's say, 90% of your resume will stay constant, will be the same. But then there is this one, you know, the 10 to 15% that you will actually modify according to each job description. So, one thing, for example, let me open a job description, something that we can do. We want to go, uh, okay, this is a very interesting topic. So we want to go, for example, in the, in the job description, and we want to look for keywords in that job descriptions. Are there any skills that are specified in that particular job description? If it is so, yes and we do have those skills, yes, let's customize, you know, let's fine tune our CV even better for them. So we can modify a little bit of our, of our uh, description, for example, we can modify a little bit of our description, maybe adding those few skills that we saw in the job descriptions. And I wouldn't touch too much this part here. So, you know, the, the, uh, the core, our work experience, because probably we have already included everything. But if, for example, this, this can happen, okay, this, for example, for you, for you guys, fresh graduates, if the job is related to one of the projects that you have done on, in your university, but you know, that wasn't a so important project, so you decided not to put that project in your CV, but you see in the job description some references to that word, cool, add those uh, add that to your um, to your CV. To make an example with myself, when I was hired by, by Ferrari, they were looking for someone uh, you know with experience in lean manufacturing and process improvement. 
I remembered, you know, uh, I remember very well that I did like a huge project on my, on my university on that topic. So I, I added the, the projects. It wasn't university projects. It wasn't a real job. But the fact that they saw the matching with lean manufacturing, that was the keyword. And I remember because they even mentioned that during the interview. And the fact that I put that specific projects that I would otherwise, otherwise I would have never uh, put those projects in my resume. That was very important. So fine tune your CV according to the job description. Read very in depth your job description. And if you wanna do even more, go on the company website and uh, look for other openings in that company and see if there are any skills that are repeated multiple times because this is a good trigger for that company maybe those skills are important i hope uh, maybe I, I was a little bit long but i hope uh, i was clear because this is important fine tune your resume according to the job descriptions yes thank you for the answer and i think that you said something that's very interesting just to look into everything that this company offers and and see what are the key competencies they are looking for and highlight that in your resume that's uh, actually a very good advice yeah thank you yeah you know this was actually yeah, this is all the that's <laughs> let's say all the all the job that we would do here let's say in the in the study part so you know analyzing the company see the values there are many interesting things that we can uh, that we can get from from that yeah, from analyzing the company's websites so I have a couple of people saying that they want more lecture with you. With you. So guys, this is not a question, but yeah, we'll ask you. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a pleasure for me. It's an honor and a pleasure. So no problems. If you, know, if you guys want to organize another webinar, absolutely. My, my pleasure. Worst case, I will be posting a lot of things and a lot of videos on my YouTube channel. We're going to have a lot of lives. We can also connect there. So Perfect. thank you very much. Yes. My pleasure. You guys like go and follow him on his YouTube channel and like show him support and like what, what you want and subscribe and you know all Whatever. that other stuff. <laughs> so uh, we have like an interesting question um, mm -hmm. that I actually I I personally had in mind, uh, which is you know the let me say the stereotype of the engineer resume is not to have a picture, not to have icons, not to have like lots of things. So uh, Daniel here was asking, I was told and had my resume reviewed by HR personnel. It was stated that icons and designs are not needed on the resume, especially if it's an engineer resume. So can you like elaborate on that or like what's your take on that? Yes, yeah, that's a extremely, uh, extremely nice question and extremely nice battle that we are all fighting, <laughs> constantly fighting. So um, I think the key here is the fact that what is a resume? It's a marketing document. And unfortunately, there is not a perfect marketing campaign. There is not a perfect resume. So that's why it's so important, this study phase uh, before. So we want to understand what is important for that company, for that audience. With that being said, let me, uh, let me show you, for example, some, some examples. That's why being visual, it doesn't necessarily mean to have all of these fancy design that I have here. Because I know that this probably won't be perfect for all of the companies, especially if they are a little bit more old fashioned companies. But the principles are the same. So that's why, for example, for Nesrin, I prepared something a little bit more you know it's 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 nice on the view you know it's it's nice for the view but it's not super fancy it's not like you know like my mind it's it's very extrovert but because you know I, i'm like that and i like even to state that on my resume if you if you don't like that cool i mean uh, probably i wouldn't be a good fit for a job and you could, wouldn't be a good fit for me so uh, but this is my case for the standard case there is always a good midway between the boring, you know, uh, word document and something too fancy. So what I would ask you to do is to go, for example, in this resume, in these models right here, you know, you can see this is very standard. This is very standard, and but it's but it's better than a job, you know, than the than the word document. So go as fancy as you feel comfortable going. Ask for feedbacks, and again. 
um, understand that anything that people will tell you is subjective because it depends also on the HR person. But one thing that you can be sure is that with a visual resume, for sure, it will stand out for sure on a pile of a lot of resumes. It will, you know, it, it will catch the attention. And let me, for example, let me share another, another personal story. My um, a person, you know, that was my, my ex-girlfriend, I prepared for her the, the resume and it was very nice. It was, uh, there was um, this, some, some colors or something. It was very, very interesting. And she went to Google uh, in a career fair. The comment of the person receiving her CV was, wow, finally some color. You know, then she was contacted. We, we studied together. She was super good. And now she's working for Google. Uh, but, you know, this to tell you, you know, after you've seen a lot of, diff, uh, you know, of resumes that all look the same, oh, some color. That was the, uh, the, the reaction. So, again, important, go on the company website, connect with people in the company, try to understand how old-fashioned that company is. But, again, a visual resume 99.9% .9 of the time works better. Then again, choose how fancy you want to go with the, uh, with the um, design. Okay, I hope this answers. So um, I have an, another question. Uh, how to highlight the volunteer work in a very professional way, especially if it's um, a professional volunteer work, like if, for example, for us, Charlie engineers, it's with SP or AAGE or something like that. How to highlight it in a way that, you know, when re the recruiter looks at, sees a person that is a leader, that person is engaged with the industry, something like that. So it, it pops. So for example, let me, let me show you here. What you can do, um, out of that volunteer experience, you for sure have got some skills. So for example, let me go on, on Nesrin's example. She was, you know, a SPA association. So this was, uh, she told me was for her university. But the same thing can be with your volunteering uh, association or anything else. We can put this in our experience because experience and activities, you know, this is something that we have done. And we can actually put some of the projects that we have done with them to prove some of our skills. So for example, I wanted to put for her that she is able to speak in public and experience in events organizations. So she is an organized person. She is able to handle um, pressure and to speak in public, to uh, deal with people. And her volunteering experience here, we put that here, is the proof that she can actually do that. So this can be a you know, professional way to put your, um, your experience. Uh, try to think about the skills that you have learned, about the project that you have done for your volunteering experience. Can be even you know even going out distributing flyers, you know, to, to and papers to to people for your charity uh, association. That is an experience. You are you know you met a lot of people, and again numerical results. Uh, you know, find uh, X lead for my association or raise X uh, dollars for my association and for my charity. All of these can be a proof some of, of some of your skills. So yeah, don't hesitate to put these in your work experience and activity because this is something, uh, part of your skill set that you will bring to the company as well. I hope this answer, maybe, uh, did you want something even more specific? Uh, just give me a follow up. No, just, to, just uh, the broad lines. Okay, so yeah, so put it here and, um, and find the skills that can be proven by that experience. That experience as a proof of some skills that you have. So um, we, we have something good here. Actually, I have a couple of good questions. So uh, number one, someone is asking, can I contact the HR person or to follow up on my application or something like that? Or... That's a mm. no-no. Mm, 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 mm. Interesting. So uh, as a follow-up, so you're, you, have already, you were already in contact with that person. If you're already were in contact, you already exchanged emails, 
and he or she is not getting back to you, yes, no problem. Just, you know, very formal, you know, very easy email. You know, I'm, I was waiting for, for, for some feedback and, or for example, they tell you that, this is very important, they tell you that they have decided to move on with another candidate. So something pretty interesting that you can do is answer that email, you know, thank him for the time and for the consideration and asking if he or she could take some time to please give you a couple of feedbacks on things that you could improve and the reasons why you are not a good you know, a good um, fit for the job so that you can work on that. And usually they will, they will answer that. Usually they, they, they will do that. Something that I would not recommend you to do instead is you, up, you applied for some very big companies. Let me get, I don't know, again, the Google example or General Electric. You didn't make it through the first step and you received the very famous automatic reply, in that case, I think it would make no sense to connect with someone randomly on LinkedIn and asking him or her for, for feedbacks. That, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Something that you can do, you can add HR personnel, you can add people from that company that you're very interested into, you just add them on, on LinkedIn and you start sharing things. You start engaging with their post, not in a fishy way, you know, not, not in, a, in, a, in a very, you know, uh, in, in a good way. You actually see what they're doing, what they're interested in, and maybe they can engage with your posts. And that could be a start of a conversation. So use uh, LinkedIn smartly, you know, in, in a smart way. So I have like a um, few questions that basically were around the same idea, the difference between the resume and CV and what if I have more things to mention, can I bypass the one page limit and stuff like that. So can you like in a nutshell, what is CV, what's resume, what to mention here, what to mention here, so they, they're not confused? Yeah, so uh, use all um, the tool, you know, use the job descriptions and the tool to find the best uh, keywords and to have an idea of what to put into your CV. Unfortunately, please, one page. I know it's super hard. This is, this is the hardest part. And, um, but it has to be one page. One thing that you can actually do, if you have projects, if you have some example of the work that you've done, the projects that you have done, hyperlink all of that in your CV so they can click and go directly to your LinkedIn, go directly to your website, to your repository of the projects. This is something that I would invite you to do like very much, but please try to be in one page and try to understand. And this is, you know, like marketing. It's a, it's a constant improvement. It's a trial and error if you want uh, up to a certain point. Uh, try to understand which are the best skills, the best thing that you can showcase to uh, you know, trigger attention in, in your audience, but please one, one page. And then your LinkedIn can be, you know, can be your full page where you have a lot of things. You can add something maybe in your uh, cover letter. If there is something super related to that job description, yes, do that. And you can take all of your references and all of your things with you at the uh, job interview. But yeah, one a page simple and try to understand using the job descriptions, using the keywords, using the experience and the feedbacks from people who are already in the company, people who are interviewing you. Try to make one, one page. Yeah, absolutely. And hyperlinks, a lot of hyperlinks. Perfect. You Thank you so much, Pietro, for the amazing uh, presentation and for answering like lots of questions. Uh, again, everyone wants you back, so maybe we can like do a collaboration between your YouTube channel and Pi Petra YouTube channel and like sure. uh, produce content and and so on and so forth. Uh, so again, thank you so much uh, for joining us today, and thank you for all the information. Uh, thank you guys for joining and for tuning in. Please go follow uh, Pietro YouTube channel and uh, follow him yeah. on LinkedIn as well. And we will see you in the next lecture in just. A little under under forty five minutes. Thank All you, right. Pietro. Thank, Thank you everyone. so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'm uh, looking forward to connect with you and good luck. Thank you for having me here. Bye bye. 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 bye.